Well, hey there, everybody. It's once again time for Astronomy Daily Live. It's two hours UTC, and it's time to come together again, join the ever-growing circle of friends, to um, come together every single day to just share a passion, share a passion for, you know, science and specifically um, the science of astronomy. I'm going to start up my smartphone here and just sort of hang here for a little while to let everybody, excuse me, let everybody in. So I uh, had a pretty, pretty good observing night last night. Collected um, 200 images of the uh, of the area of NGC 7243. Now that's just a a nondescript um, um, open star cluster uh, just north of um, Cygnus, and uh, I I picked that mm, sort of randomly. I was looking on my charts, and it's like, you know, I want to find, you know, some kind of a cluster so I can have a bunch of different stars, different brightnesses, relatively bright, but, you know, varying you know, between um, really, really bright and really, really faint, um, relatively separated, so I can, you know, so my software will actually say, you know, there's a star, there's a star, there's a star not have, you know, too many stars close together, so it's sort of hard, you know, to figure out uh, what's a star, you know, what that star is and what that star is. So, so uh, sort of randomly chose that. It was also up um, at sort of the, the correct um, 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 elevation above my uh, northeastern, I guess, horizon. And because uh, it's a northern object, it was basically you know going to stay stay at the same height um, the entire time that I was doing the observation, and uh, and so yeah, that that went really really well. Um, I uh, star aligned on Arcturus and um, Altair, and then with um, Altair. Right, I threw on the uh, threw on the Badenov mask here. Right, threw that on there, and instead of instead of it taking me ten or fifteen minutes to focus, it took me about thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I looked at it, and I'll do it right now. Right. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> so these are really, really awesome. You know, I, I have a hard time, you know, just because I'm a cheapskate, right? I have a hard time justifying 26 bucks for a piece of plastic, but I'm not paying for the piece of plastic. I'm paying for this interesting pattern, right? This interesting pattern, which is, you know, relatively precise, I guess. Um, and so I was able to focus on on that, and I don't know if you saw it on my Discord channel, but I will go over and show you uh, the pattern that I got. Uh, I don't even know where I put it. Did I put it in miscellaneous? Yeah. So here's the in-focus um, pattern. Uh, on the star um, 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 Altair, and when the telescope is in focus, right, this this central this central spike right here is right in between these other two spikes, and it's extremely obvious. You know, when you change the focus a little bit, this thing moves right, left and right, and um, once it gets way, way, way out, um, you know, the pattern um, vanishes. In fact, it changes into something else. Uh, but when it's in focus, right, it goes right down the middle 
and and uh, so yeah, you know, I mean, it took me like literally thirty seconds, right, to focus this thing. I then, you know, took the bad enough mask off and um, proceeded, right? And and um, here's just a uh, sample image from last night. Now, the reason why these these look like big big blobs is. And it's sort of hard to explain without uh, a, a, a better drawing. But I'm looking at the really, really, really low levels here. I'm not really looking at, uh, yeah, and it, yeah, as I said, it's hard to explain unless I draw it. And probably what I should do um, is make a couple of plots to sort of explain that, you know, because at first glance, right? I mean, if you didn't know any better, you'd look at this and say, well, that's that's not in focus, right, at all. But if you look at these fainter stars, right, at the fainter ones, it's kind of hard to see here, I know, but they are they are small, right? They're just a couple of pixels across. And, that's, and that is as good as a, um, um, as good of a focus as I can possibly get. You know, the seeing conditions are usually about one or two um, seconds of arc, and each each one of my um, pixels, I think, is about one one point six um, seconds of arc. So, uh, yeah, you know, stars should have a width of about you know two pixels, one or two or three pixels. And so um, if you look at the fainter ones here, right, you can definitely see that those are, those are pretty, pretty small, small dots. So yeah, the focus was, was probably the best I've ever uh, had with this um, system. So that, that, makes me, uh, that makes me smile. Now, uh, one of the interesting things, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing here. Um, one of the interesting things uh, last night that that I can't recall ever, ever, ever uh, experiencing is this: when I do a star alignment, right? I take my shortwave radio, which, by the way, is a Radio Shack DX. 397 right just an analog come on focus yeah he's not gonna focus he's not gonna focus come on anyway so I've I've got it tuned to 10 megahertz right 10 megahertz and and uh, you know that that is the typical um, WWV um, station that is coming out of um, 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 Fort Collins, which which is you know really really close to me, right? I mean it's just you know the next state up, so so you know relatively close. That signal is always really 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 strong. Um, I've got a little. There's a little. Uh, yeah, there's a little tuning. Tuning light comes on right, right there. It's a little red, red light you know, that comes on when it sort of locks, locks on. And so, <laughs> and so last night, I, you know, I, uh, right, I extend the antenna out, right, like I always do. Right, and it's uh, you know, I unfortunately don't really use this radio for anything else except WWV when I'm doing a star alignment, which is which is really a shame, but how it goes. Um, so it's always tuned you know, to 10 megahertz, right? And so I turn it on, right, and I start hearing the 
you know, typical dip, 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 you know, the seconds um, ticking thing. And all of a sudden, really, really, really loud, like, I mean, really loud, I hear this female voice telling me the time. And I'm like, wait a minute. This, this can't possibly be WWVH. There's, there, there's no way. And it's like, isn't, isn't that like, like way far away? I forget exactly where, right? So, you know, she tells us the time and, you know, it gives the big loud beep on the minute. And then, you know, she proceeds to, you know, do the regular um, call sign saying, you know, um, Kauai. And now the Fort Collins signal is, is there's nothing, absolutely nothing, zero, right? Now, sometimes with this, sometimes with this, I will hear very, very, very faintly um, WWVH, really faintly, right? She sort of comes on, the female voice comes on, um, 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 like a few seconds before the male voice of WWV, and and uh, but there is no male voice. There's absolutely none, zero. I'm gonna pull up my chat here so I can uh, so I can keep an eye on that. Hey there, Uncle Bill and Tom. Crystal is back. Hey there, and Andy. Hey there. So so yeah, I'm I'm. Uh, um, I'm I'm just absolutely astonished, right? And and uh, I I don't really have an explanation except you know propagation must have been really really great that way. And but for some reason there was absolutely no WWV at all, zero, none. It was it was just the female voice. And I listened to it you know for several minutes. Uh, you know, while I was doing um, star alignment and everything else, and and uh, no, it was just her her voice. So, what do you think of that, Bobby? Ah, pretty interesting that you'd be able to catch WBH and stuff. That's really crazy. You know that. I mean, that. Yeah, like I said, you know, uh, I can sometimes hear hear that really faintly, really, really faintly in the background. Uh, but this, this was really, really strong. The other interesting thing, the other interesting thing is that that little tuner light on here never came on, never came on. It was, it was like a hugely strong signal, right? I mean, I had to turn the volume down. Um, so it was this really, really strong signal and there was no lock. There was absolutely no lock on it at all. So... Go figure that. I'd never, ever, ever heard um, w um, WWVH uh, that that loud, you know, usually just barely, barely, barely. So, uh, now, um, very, very out of cool. curiosity, you ever found your dream SCR? I'm going to be looking at that uh, really, really soon. Really, really soon. And Uncle Bill, thank you for the reminder. Because, you know, I get going with these live streams and I forget to tweet. And uh, usually it's, you know, the next morning that, <laughs> that I'll notice that it's like, oh, man, I didn't do that. So, all right. Thank you, Uncle Bill, for the reminder. You are, you are awesome. Always on top of things. As far as I can tell, at least you're always on top of things. All right, well, cheers. So I've got the, uh, yeah, so just um, to summarize, last night's observing run uh, went really, really well. Um, I, haven't, I haven't really looked at um, much of the data yet, um, but I actually did get uh, um, um, a sequence of, uh, of um, focus things, so I'll probably make that into a little movie. Um, uh, just because, right? Um, 
briefly looked at Saturn, um, and you know the one thing that that uh, really bugged me, and I'm going to have to think about this. I'm going to have to work w work this out. The my um, um, focal reducer uh, works really, really, really well on you know when I look through um, um, my eyepiece. It works really, really well when I use it on the webcam, right? But when I put it on my um, CCD camera, it's it's a com I I at this point I really don't understand what I'm seeing. So um, I actually had posted a question um, to the Cloudy Nights forum about about you know which focal reducer to 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 get and the first response i got was you know focal reducers are great but you got to worry about the spacing um and you know i i always think that i know enough about optics right to not be too confused about things right and when it when it works for my webcam, where the distance between the focal reducer and the actual um, CMOS camera is about that far, right? It's a couple inches or so. Um, that works fine, right? Now, with my CCD camera, the distance between the focal reducer and the CCD um, camera itself, um, um, the array is is maybe a little bit longer than that, but not much. A couple inches, maybe a few inches, maybe. So I'm not quite sure why uh, I'm getting such such a. I mean, I'm not getting any image at all with the focal reducer um, in terms of um, like a star image or anything else. I'm I'm getting a, a black circle right in the middle and kind of a weird looking ring like a um, um, like an out of focus star right and when I change the focus nothing happens and it doesn't matter where I point in the sky right so I'm not looking at a bright star right but I'm seeing this 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 weird thing so yeah it's just uh you know one of those things that uh i've obviously jumped on to a learning curve that i um I wasn't aware that i'm gonna have to um, get on to so i'm more than happy to do that i uh you know i'm sort of one of those that that uh you know when when confronted with with an obstacle uh it's like, well, you know, let's figure out how to get over it or around it or under it or through it or figure out a way to remove the obstacle completely, right? Um, and I see this as an obstacle, so uh, who knows? Cheers to obstacles. It keeps us humble. <laughs> Coffee. Hey, Uncle Phil Duran, I remember there was an old school technique of recording actuations with WWE in the background and Crystal Gems cap, but it's amazing to use a mic astrology singer. It's amazing that I use a mic. Well, you know, I think almost everybody uses a mic of some sort. I, uh, um, Crystal, um, um, when I started this, I, uh, um, you know, obviously I did a few tests first and, and uh, the the audio um, quality that is coming um, from the webcams in sort of these closed closed rooms, uh, you know, being a musician, uh, I can hear all the reverb and everything else, you know, the sounds um, bouncing off the walls and everything else, and uh, it just wasn't a good sound. But with a mic, with a mic, right? Um, I can sort of direct that sound, and you can't really hear a lot of reverb or anything else. So, it's just, uh, it's just my 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 little 
a little bit of uh, of um, 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 quality control, I guess. The one thing that I definitely, definitely need, because, you know, as you can see, I'm having to hold this, right? So what I definitely, definitely need to get, um, and I haven't yet because, you know, actually now's a good time. Um, I'm, I'm going to get myself a mic stand because then at least I can just have it here and, and uh, yeah, yeah, a boom, a boom. Some kind of boom or mic stand or something, anything you know, to sort of um, free up my, my, my hands. Um, and Uncle Bill, if you, if you recall, right, my, uh, my current preferred way to um, record occultations is exactly what you're talking about. Um, have the WWV um, going on um, sort of in the background, have, have an audio um, recorder, and looking through you know, the telescope, right, when you see the star vanish, you yell out, right, huh! and when you see the star reappear, huh! right? And then you can take that um, um, recording and and uh, uh, you know put it through um, like um, 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 audacity, and you can actually hear and, and see you know the tick marks and get a very 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 accurate um, timing of that. Now you have to take into account um, reaction time, right? So sort of have to experiment with that a little bit and see what 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 your reaction time is but my reaction time if I'm really alert really 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 alert is about a quarter of a second or so and I've measured this um, and and uh, yeah it's about a quarter of a second but you know that'll vary some people is, are really really fast mm -hmm. and some people are really really slow and I think a quarter of a second is is uh, probably average. You know, I'm sort of an average guy, so you know, a quarter of a second. Yeah, I think that's about right. So, cheers. Yeah, you know, I uh, as I said, I I do like the quality of the mic too. It's just a little bit more more clean, and and uh, um, yeah, you know, I mean, what I could do, you know, just for fun right maybe i should do this at some point is uh you may notice right that uh that i have a keyboard over here right i have a keyboard this is a, a roland phantom x8 and i can actually plug uh this this mic into um one of the inputs on this board and then i can run that sound through my board um, with all kinds of effects and, and all kinds of interesting things. Maybe I should do that at some point um, just for fun. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's sort of fun to play with all the effects that, that way. So, uh, but, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, you know, um, I definitely like the quality of, of, of these kinds of mics as opposed to a webcam mic. So that's, that's why... I decided to go that way, and and that's a you know, it's a very very small price to pay um, to have to 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 hold hold this. Um, I remember at first I was holding it like really really tight, right, and I wasn't paying any attention because I was talking, right. I mean, when I'm doing this live stream, I'm thinking astronomical things. I'm not thinking about anything else, right. So. I was just clenching and clenching and clenching and clenching. And after, after um, 10 or 15 um, um, minutes of this, it's like, man, something hurts. Something hurts. It's like, oh. And it's like, you know, I couldn't even move my hand for a while because it was so, it was so cramped up. So now, you know, I've learned you know, to hold it really lightly, right? And you'll notice, too, um, um, that I switch hands uh, often. 
So yeah, it's just um, one of those things. That's that's um, one of the things that that uh, this live stream is all about too. Is 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 always getting better and better and better and better. And uh, you know, I I I have a long way to go, and I'm a slow learner. So you know, things take me a long, long, long time you know to figure out. But uh, once I figure them out, I've got them pretty pretty locked in. So yeah, but you know, that reminds me about getting a microphone stand, and I am going to get one. I'm going to get one uh, maybe right after this live stream because I can. <laughs> so cheers. So I've got some coffee here. It's uh, cooling off pretty pretty quickly. So. And I've got the hydrogen hydroxide again, HOH, this wonderful, amazing molecule that they've actually found on the moon in solid form. Uh, don't know how much, but it looks like there's a lot. So cheers. All right, so I wanted to do a little bit of ranting here for a little bit and that that is I I noticed I noticed okay let's back up so back in June back in June uh, it was observed that a that a dust storm had begun on Mars on the planet Mars and this dust storm spread to the entire planet. And, uh, you know, dust storms on, on Mars uh, look pretty nasty, right? I mean, usually, uh, even, even with a modest telescope, you can point it at, at Mars and, you know, carefully look. And you can see, you know, little um, features on there, you know, some darker areas. You can oftentimes see um, um, the polar caps. Really, really cool, right? And Mars was coming up to um, closest approach, right? We were going to be um, really, really close to to Mars. So that means that Mars Mars looks um, much larger than what it um, normally does, right? So it was going to be really, really, really big, and it was going to be really awesome because we'd be able to see a lot more of the details, right? And right, right before opposition, right before this um, closest approach, this um, um, dust storm occurred and blanketed, blanketed the entire planet, right? Just, just so uh, um, when you looked at, at Mars in, in June and July, and even into August or so, it's all you saw was just this, you know, this Mars colored, you know, sort of rusty orangey uh, ball, right? No features at all or very, very hard to see anything at all, right? Well, you know, we have, um, we have uh, rovers on, on Mars, right? Um, we have um, Curiosity, which which is this big, you know, sort of car-sized um, science laboratory with all the cameras and all of the instrumentation and the big wheels and everything else. Um, and Curiosity, oh, I forget. It's it's been up there for like something like 2,100 Mars days, you know, so-called SOLs, which is um, yeah something like you know 20. 22 or 2300 Earth Earth days, so so quite a long time, right? Um, we also had uh, up there as of as of June, um, 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 this other rover called um, Opportunity. Um, An Opportunity was was a a uh, sort of a twin rover to um, um, to another rover called called Spirit. Um, Spirit and Opportunity 
um, were basically launched and landed at the same time. And um, one rover, you know, sort of landed on one side of the planet and the other landed on the opposite side. So, um, and um, Spirit uh, lasted, well, both, both um, rovers, uh, their, their planned lifetime, right, their planned lifetime was 90 days, right? If, um, um, if they hit 90 days, then everybody would be just absolutely thrilled, right? It's like we have accomplished our goal. At 90 days, we're, you know, we'd be like, we, we are satisfied, right? We're completely satisfied. Well, that was something like 14 years ago, right? Um, and I don't remember how long ago it was. It was it's been maybe a couple of years. Maybe somebody in the chat knows uh, what happened to um, Spirit. Um, but Spirit got, got stuck. It got stuck in a sand dune or something. We'd be able to look it up here. Um, but it got it got stuck, and um, actually both of these rovers, um, 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 Opportunity and Spirit, they run on um, solar power, so they have panels and batteries. Now, the Curiosity rover runs off of a um, nuclear power. It's actually n not exactly... Um, 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 nuclear in the sense of like fusion um, they actually use use the heat from the decay of plutonium to you know when they capture that that heat and turn that into electricity and that's what powers that um, rover so so it it has as far as I know it doesn't have any solar panels on it at all it just runs off of these nuclear power plants and I guess technically it probably runs off of batteries, right? The nuclear power plant charges the batteries and then the batteries run everything. It's probably how, how that goes. So, um, so a couple of years ago, I think it was a couple of years ago, um, um, spirits got stuck and it was basically, you know, just turned off, right? It's like, you know, just go die. Right. Um, um, but um, the Opportunity rover um, continued. And Soft Soil in 2009, was it 2009? Wow, was it that long ago, Tom? Wow. See, it's a sure sign of getting old when things that happened uh, nine years ago seems like just two years ago. So, okay. I'm going to believe you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, of course you're going to try, right? Of course you're going to try, because it's like you know you want these things um, um, to keep going. So, uh, so um, the opportunity rover though continued, right? It continued, it continued, it continued, <laughs> um, up until this dust storm last June, and the dust storm. Um, was was so thick, right, that there wasn't enough sunlight to um, charge the batteries, and so the rover sensed this, and it's like, well, look, I'm I'm just going to go into hibernation mode and wait this out, right? So turned off almost everything, you know, to consume as as you know small amount of power as it possibly could. And it, it and we waited. And we've been um, waiting now for, you know, like a couple of months. Now, the dust storm on Mars has more or less just, cle you know, um, cleared up, right? I've seen um, some recent pictures of Mars that are absolutely stunning, right? So, you know, the dust storm is over, right? This um, dust storm is over. 
but uh, apparently we haven't heard from um, um, Rover Opportunity. And this is where I'm going to start my, my rant, okay? I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, there's this, there's this huge campaign to, uh, I mean, everybody seems to be extremely, like extremely, extremely concerned about this little rover. Um, you know, hope, hope it survives. You know, it's become like a, um, like a member of the family. Um, um, Lakdawala, uh, she she actually started a uh, um, um, a tweet and said, "Look, you know, I can't give you all the details, but uh, I really want you all." To, to let the world know how much you care about this little rover. And that, that ha that's, got me, that's got me scratching my head because, you know, and, you know, maybe it's just a bias on my part, but, you know, this is sort of, it's just a machine, right? It's a great machine, right? But it was supposed to go for 90 days, and it has gone for, I think they landed in 2004, right? So I, I think they've been going for, you know, 14 or 15 years, right? Instead of 90 days, right? So let's, uh, let's figure that out. Let's just, let's just say that they, I think they landed like July... July 2004, 2005, I forget. <coughs> um, let's just say 2004, right? So that's 14 years times approximately 365 days a year. So that's 5,110 uh, days, right? And that makes sense because they, right before the storm, they, they had celebrated um, rover opportunities 5,000th uh, Sol, right? So 5,110 Earth days, that sounds about right, right? So let's divide that by 90, right? So it has outlived its expected and planned lifetime by almost a factor of 57, right? Now, you know, to put that into perspective, right? Average human life, I don't know, 76, let's just say 80 years, right? 80 years times 57. So that's as if we had lived 4,560 years, right? Now, I think that's, that's pretty amazing, right? I think that is pretty incredible, right? Um, so since it's outlived its lifetime, by by you know a, a huge 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 factor when when it finally you know uh uh dies dies um i'm not quite sure i'm not quite sure why why there seems to be so much concern and so much upset about that um and i guess i've i've heard I've heard uh, uh, and thought of sort of two possibilities right now. The first is that maybe, maybe this is a way for, you know, the space agency and science communicators and all of that to sort of get a sense of, of what the public feels about, you know, space exploration and all that, you know. If, if, if they can start a campaign where it's like, you know, rover opportunity is dying, uh, you know, let's, let's, you know, wail and gnash our teeth about it. And let's just sort of see, you know, what the response is. So that's sort of my first um, theory. The other one, which, which um, 
um, um, um, Emily Lakdawalla sort of alluded to in in her, in her tweet is that is that uh, um, the people who have been working um, with this rover uh, are suddenly out of a job, right? And so uh, it isn't necessarily a lament for the loss of opportunity, but it's a lament for the loss of these jobs, right? Which I don't know. I'm a little, uh, it's like, well, you know, it was supposed to last for 90 days and it lasted for 14 years and you're complaining and you're worried about losing your job. Like, mm, I don't get that. I mean, everybody on that team uh, has this huge, huge, huge amount of experience. Are they really worried about not having a job? I don't know. So anyway, I'm, I'm just a little, I guess I'm confused about, about, you know, what the big deal is about losing opportunity. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's done, it's done an amazing job and it's given us, you know, these incredible insights in, in huge amount of data. I mean, huge, huge, huge. Um, uh, and, and, uh, you know, to, I mean, what I'm hearing, right, about, you know, save opportunity, uh, uh, you know, as I said, it's like, you know, losing a family member and, and uh, you know, just on and on and on. I mean, when spirit, when they gave up on spirit, I mean, I pay attention to these things, right? When they gave up on spirit, I didn't really hear a lot of that. But I guess, you know, if it was 2009, the, the social media environment has, has changed, right, in that many years. If it's actually been nine, nine years, wow. Um, then, then, you know, the social media um, environment has, has changed. And so maybe, maybe there was that, that level of wailing and crying and everything else. But um, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, I, I feel about um, Rover Opportunity the same way that I feel about um, Cassini, right? When they did, you know, the grand um, finale and smashed Cassini um, um, to Saturn, um, I, 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 I think that that was incredibly epic. I thought that was absolutely, I mean, look, if you're going to go do it like that, right? That was epic, especially, especially after the most incredible mission, you know, you could possibly imagine, right? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, Cassini I mean, exceeded all expectations. Huge, 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 right? Absolutely fantastic. When, when, when it was plunged in the atmosphere of, of Saturn, that was a day of celebration, right? For me, I mean, that wasn't a sad day. That was a happy day. It's like, yes, yes, you ended well, right? And with opportunity, I sort of see it the same way. It's like, dude, you've been... You've been crawling around on the surface of Mars for for years and years and years, um, giving us all this incredible data and these incredible views, right? And it's like, I mean, it's time to go. So just go. And and on top of that, right? Look, it is just a machine, right? It's it's like it's like. Uh, well, some people are attached to their cars, I guess, but you know, it's like losing a car, or losing a bicycle. Um, it's like, well, that really, really sucks, but I am, I'm not going to start a campaign to, you know, get my car back. And one, you can cry and wail and scream 
and shout all you want. If opportunity is dead, it's dead, right? If the batteries are dead, it's not going to come back no matter how hard you ask, how many times you ask, right? It's not going to come back. So why do it? Why do it? And that's why I came up, you know, with my two um, um, theories. Maybe it's to sort of get a sense of, you know, what the public thinks about space exploration. Um, you know, if there's like absolutely um, no response at all, then maybe people really don't care, right? But if there's this huge response, then it's like, okay, um, people care. And, you know, those, those who, uh, you know, are in control of budgets and, and um, missions and all that can see and hear that and be like, okay, you know, the public is interested, seems to be um, really, really concerned about this um, rover. So, you know, maybe we should, you know, keep on, you know, sending missions there and everything else. And that's cool. That's cool. Um, but if it's to save jobs, it's to save, save jobs that, um, I mean, these people are well qualified, right? I mean, they're well experienced, well qualified. They're not going to have any problem finding a job. Come on. They've got all these years and years and years. So anyway, hey there, Hip. Nice to see you there. There too You're in the right chat. behind the chat. Oh, I'm I'm um, looking at it from time to time. So, um, what's up, Hip? What's you, what's you been up to? Hip, hip. All right. Well, cool. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna step off of my um, soapbox now. It's just uh, it's just to me, it's 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 a little weird. It's just a little. It's a little weird to be uh, so concerned about this this uh, this object, <laughs> you know, this machine that that uh, you know, yes, has done amazing things, but but uh, no, let's let's um, do something else. Let's do something better, right? And Jobs? No, those people are set, right? I mean, you put that, um, 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 that you were a part of that team, and I, I can almost guarantee, right, that you're going to be hired just like that, right? Because you've got the experience that, that very, very, very few um, people have. So, all right, enough of that. I was... Uh, I was looking a little bit more into the Australian Desert Fireball Network and um, found their website. And um, I just wanted to walk through that a little bit because uh, I found it a little disappointing. Um, so I think that I. I think I put it over on my Discord, a link to it at least. Uh, where would I put that? Uh, I don't remember now. Put it under miscellaneous. Uh, I don't remember where I put it. Hang it. Uh, space, maybe? No. Where did I put it? Miscellaneous? No, no, no. Science? Yeah, here it is. So here's the, and we sort of looked at a paper about this yesterday that had come out at uh, the archive.org site. And as I said, I got to say, I'm a little, little disappointed <laughs> uh, in, this, in this site. So, I mean, it's obviously a, uh, um, um, a WordPress site. Um, those of you, you know, who do um, web um, programming probably recognize this this um, format. So, you know, WordPress is really, really easy to put together. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much time and care has gone into the development of this site. 
But the first thing that I did, right, is uh, I went to their blog because it's like, oh, yeah, you know, let's see if there's any, any kind of updates. So you go to their blog, and the last entry was on the 6th of November. And I guess that means the 6th of November 2017. And the only reason why I think it's 2017 is because if you go all the way to the bottom, they have a copyright 2017. So I think all of these entries are for 2017. So there hasn't been an update to their blog um, in, in almost a year, right? Uh, November, what, 10 months or so? Um, so that's kind of strange, I guess. Um, you know, they just published a paper, but their blog hasn't been updated for 10, 10 months. But it's like, oh, okay, okay, fine. Um, so then we go to galleries. It's like, okay, well, cool. You know, let's see some of these shots, right? Let's, you know, because they're they're using these all sky cameras, and apparently, at least what the paper said, right, is that they had 52 of these um, spread over um, um, quite a bit of of area um, down in Australia, and I'll actually show you a map here in a minute. So. So here, here are, in plural, right, plural galleries, right? And there's one picture, right? But it says Fireball Images and Galleries, right? So we click on that. And let's see. Oh, 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 okay. Now, when I did this before, see, it's going to make a liar out of me now. Which is which is just fine to me. <laughs> um, when I clicked on that before, nothing happened. Nothing um, popped up at all. But okay, okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand um, corrected here. So here are some shots of some fireballs. This is actually what they're calling a double fireball. And I'm not quite sure why it's sort of is dotted like that, except except for for the fact that maybe we're looking at exposures, right? So you know the camera has some kind of a shutter, and and is doing you know a fast exposure time kind of a thing. So it isn't quite video. Um, so I you know that's my only explanation for for that. Anyway, so here's here's some other shots, and I I haven't um, looked at these these yet. So let's let's um, go through these here, see what else they've got. So there's a there's a nice one, and I, I guess these are these are colorized, so you can sort of see there's a little bit of red, yellow, green, and then red again. Yeah, maybe. Let's see what else we got here. There's another one. Can see some of the background stars, but you know, but this is the southern hemisphere, so so I'm completely lost. Everything's upside down. I think, uh, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to even guess. I saw a couple of pictures that showed um, like Orion upside down 2015. But you know, all these are kind of old shots. I know that they've been running for a few years now. Silicon Valley, okay. Other Silicon Valley. I don't know what they're supposed to be showing there. Don't know what that is. That's kind of weird looking. There's one way up there. There's a nice bright one. Perth daytime fireball. Oh, I guess that's probably it right there. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. That was definitely not taken with an all sky camera, though. <laughs> oh, there's another shot, shot of it there. Cool. 
I don't think I've ever seen a daytime um, fireball. That's one of the things that I've I've never seen. Maybe someday. Got to be at the right place at the right time, yeah? Okay, well, cool. I'm I'm glad that there's a little a little bit of a gallery at least although these are really old right i mean 2015 i don't know if i've seen anything younger than 2015 it was 2014 i don't know how many of these there are it's a nice long one yeah see i don't know if you can can see it here but here's the constellation um 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 um, Orion, right? Here's Sirius, right? But to us Northerners, right? This is all upside down, right? And this is looking north, right? This is obviously looking north, and Orion is upside down, and um, Canis Major is upside down. Here's Procyon, right there. Here's Canis Minor, right? Here's Gemini. Right, um, here's a Riga up here, but it's all upside down. So yeah, totally confusing. <laughs> there's another shot of Orion there. Sirius, this is um, Canopus down here. This is actually the second brightest um, star in the sky. Well, third if you count the sun. So yeah, this this I can just barely barely see from from my latitude. I think I think Canopus gets about like four four or five degrees above the horizon maximum. So there's another daytime fireball. Cool. Tenth of October. Yeah, see, see, but. I mean, these are these are really really old. Where, where's the new stuff? That's a pretty nice one. I'm pretty sure that their cameras are shuttered, right? Because I don't think that meteors do this. You know, go blink, 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 blink like that. That's some kind of shuttering on the camera. Pretty um, equally spaced for the most part. So, huh, interesting. But some of these shots are kind of hard to see. There's probably, that's probably actually the moon. That's the moon again. Is there supposed to be a meteor in here Some? Oh yeah, there it is. That's a nice bright one. But you can see here, yeah, here's Orion upside down again. Sirius here. Yeah, very cool. Uh, here are the Hyades and the Pleiades. Cool. Now, uh, are you like, a little bit disappointed about the site, or you're, are you finding it pretty darn good? Well, I got to say, well, I didn't know that these shots were were here. So this 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 makes it a little better but i think what they need to do is they need to update their site because uh it's sort of outdated so here's another you know i guess this is just a griping live stream today um so here's apparently all the sites in australia right and each one of these you can click on and it gives you a little picture of the camera right so you know all these are in you know some kind of environmental housing so they don't get wet and sand blasted and you know all that but then there's this thing here that says view photographs from this camera now let's see what happens if i do this So this one is coming up, right? So there's, there's what, three views from this camera. 
So that's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Let's go to this one. Okay, so here's another one, solar powered. You know, I think they all are solar powered with um, batteries, all right? So let's view photographs from this camera. Uh oh. See, that's not good. Let's go over to this one. So, so this, this is okay, right? You know, they forgot to take a picture of the camera. That's cool. But let's um, view photographs from this camera. Uh oh. Not found. Also. Okay. Let's uh, let's go over here. Let's look at this one. Right. It's out out in the middle of um, um, of Western Australia. Right. I think this is this is like seriously not where anything else is. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we definitely have one picture there. <laughs> Again, you know, here's Orion upside down for us Northerners. Canis Major, Sirius, Procyon, um, Procyon Canopus. Of course, here's here's the other side of the Milky Way. So there's one picture there. All right, let's uh, let's look at this one. Let's see if this one. Uh, well, this has got got one too. It's uh, clouds, you know. So pretty cool. That one actually has a meteor in it. That's nice. I'm looking there. There was one that I noticed. Okay, well, here's another one that's taking a couple of pictures. There is a meteor, of course. Now, kind of strange, this is right side up. So what they do, did they rotate the image around? I'm not quite sure. And it's not going to the next one. There we go. That was a bright one. Okay, well, cool. So anyway, as you can see, some of these work and some of them don't. Oh, that one doesn't. Let's look at uh, this one. Mount Ives. That one's working. Or at least there are pictures. So I guess... I guess my my gripe about this site is that is that I'm a little spoiled, right? I'm a little spoiled because um, because I often visit this site, right? Which is I guess you know the American version, the United States version of of that this is the nasa all sky fireball network and it's got a little map showing where the sites are and you know um um the circles indicate you know sort of how far out they can see you know that that is like on the horizon right and over here right are it's kind of hard to see i think on your screen but these are dates right 2018-0829 okay that was yesterday at least ut right and so here here's sort of an array of all cameras in the network and if a meteor is detected then these images pop up, right? And each one of these images is actually a short little video showing showing the event. But you can come up here and there's an event summary, right? And it's saying the date and the time, how fast, 
um, how high it started and how high it was when it finished. And you can sort of see the little the little streaks here. I think these are AVI files. So I can um, let me uh, let me see if I can save these. I'm gonna put them in a a new folder. Oh, that's a PNG. Oh, I don't want a PNG. I want a I want the AVI. Save link as uh, Meteor. Save. I think it's already done. Um, so these are really, really short, but yeah, there we go. Did you see that? This will loop. You can sort of watch it. There it goes. You see that all right? Looks like there's a, an airplane or something moving near that f field of view. And you know the meteor is is marked and it's got the time down, you know, the date and the time. It's it's I think that this well, as I said, I'm sort of spoiled by this site because it's so uh, complete, right? It's like these events happened yesterday, <laughs> right? Not in 2014. Uh, they happened yesterday, right? And they've got um, data for for any date we want. We, this is going back to uh, August 9th, but pretty sure I don't remember exactly where, but I'm pretty sure you know they have an archive, right? So then, what they can do, right? If if two or more cameras see this event, then they can sort of triangulate and do some other um, um, calculations, and that what and that's what this um, summary um, report is. And this is sort of a complicated thing. I'm not going to get into it now because I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing that, you know, we're getting past past time a little bit here. But uh, this, I guess, is more like what I would expect from a meteor detection site, right? Actual data, um, you know, now, of course, this isn't data. This is just the plots of the data. But I'm thinking that the data is probably available, probably, if, if, if I um, um, dug around a little bit. But these are all meteor events that happened uh, yesterday, right? Now, this looks kind of funny. Let's, um, let's, let's look at this one just for fun here. Uh, we'll save it and we'll, uh, whoop, which one is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, 12-11-47. This guy. Oh, I can, uh, Okay, so, yeah, all right. Well, that is obviously the moon getting a lot of internal reflections and everything else, but okay, yes, yeah, so there it is, just a little zhup. Cool. I don't see the crosshairs on this one. Oh, you don't? Okay, no. just right above the moon. Uh, it goes by really fast, right? These are just really, really short, short little clips. Okay, now I saw it. You saw it? Cool, good. Good, 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 good. So, you know, these are all the events that happened yesterday uh, as seen by this network of telescopes sort of, you know, spread over the United States. <laughs> Some of them are in the southwest. Some of them are, uh, where's that map? 
Yeah, some of them are down around me. There's a few down in Florida. There's a bunch over here. There's a bunch over here. So, yeah, you know, not good coverage, right? I mean, it'd be nice to have more, right? But what they do have is pretty good. And they're seeing quite a few events every single clear night, right? And that's kind of the nice thing about having a network of these is that, you know, some locations you might have clouds, others you, you won't. And you can see, you know, this is the same event, right? But because of the position um, geographically um, of these cameras, they're going to be seen in different um, um, parts of the sky. That's parallax. So there were quite a few of these little events yesterday. Sometimes, you know, three cameras see them. Sometimes two cameras see them. Sometimes five cameras see them. And look at all, all the different angles. This is all the same um, meteor, right? Exactly the same object. Just seen, you know, from different locations. So that one is pretty cool, I'm sure. Yeah. And, you know, they plot a little orbit and this these plots here are um if you were to and it's kind of hard to show it on on this you know but if you plot the brightness sort of along that path okay that's what this is so right it started faint got brighter 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 and then faint again so we'll go over this um site in more um, detail sometime in the future. I think I've gone over it once or twice on these live streams before, so I don't like to repeat too often. But yeah, there were quite a few events yesterday, right? And you can watch this every single day, right? Every day they have a new list, and if there's an event, it's going to pop up on this list, and you can look at all the data and everything else. I guess I'm sort of interested in seeing if there's an actual archive, data archive. I'm not seeing anything here. Um, oh, here's some live views. Okay, so here's, here's some live views of all the cameras, right? And let's, let's just confirm that these are live views, right? Let's, uh, let's pick one that's clear. This one looks clear. Every, almost everybody else looks cloudy. But let's pick this one that's uh, moderately clear. And let's look at the timestamp. Look at that. 2018, 8.30 at 2.40 UTC. So that was half an hour ago. Pretty good. I'm not... Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this, at these star patterns, and I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any constellations I'm familiar with here. Hmm. Not quite sure what what we're seeing. In that, I'm not seeing any any constellations. I'm seeing a bunch of dots, but I'm not I'm not seeing any constellations familiar ones at least hmm assume that this is Jupiter and Mars maybe um, yeah I don't know I don't know but at least you know the date and the time is is uh, is pretty much right now let's let's look at this one. Okay, so this one, it was actually, wow, so that was like a month ago. So that guy's been down for a while, it looks like. Everybody else looks cloudy. Let's look at this guy. So here's one at 2.39 UTC. So that, again, was about half an hour ago. Hmm. And there's the moon rising over on the left. I guess that makes sense. 
But again, I yeah, that's got to be that's got to be Mars. But uh, I guess I'm not seeing enough stars here to really be able to pick out the constellations because I'm not I'm not seeing any familiar patterns. Or anyway, you know, the cool thing is is that you know these are live updates. Live updates, yep, 239 again. Uh, I guess, I mean, I'm expecting to see like Scorpius and, oh, maybe there's Scorpius. I don't know. All right, well, cool. I think, uh, I think that's enough for today. I just wanted you know to follow up a little bit on that. I should check my chat too. I'm gonna yeah, you're way behind in chat again. I'm way behind in chat again. I'm gonna stop sharing, and let's see. I'm gonna check out check out the chat really really quick. Yeah, fireballs are awesome, awesome. Uh, <laughs> Yep, you're just crazy. <laughs> I like you. Stay around. <laughs> All right, you guys. I think I'm going to get out of here for now. So thanks for coming in again. It's always, always, always awesome. I like doing this. This, this, you know, is so much fun. And, uh, you know, I don't consider this work work at all. This is just fun, fun stuff. You know, um, I think... I think if it was work, I wouldn't be doing it because then it'd be like, oh man, you know, I've got to, I've got to do this and I've got to get ready and I've got to do all this kind of stuff. I don't, I don't really plan much. I mean, you know, I think I usually think a little bit, um, but, uh, you know, plans change and, and, uh, yeah, this is just sort of, you know, stream of consciousness kind of stuff. So just a lot of fun you know, to get together with all of you every single day if you want uh, I'll be here same time same place two hours UTC and uh, well until tomorrow I will see you later bye there <laughs>